Hello everybody, I'm Dave. Welcome back to Sailing Madness. Now, as you'll probably hear at some point in this episode, it's blowing an absolute hooli here in the marina. The weather in the UK has been absolutely terrible over the last couple of weeks, so no sailing again today. But what I do have in this video is a little update on some of the electronic upgrades that I have fitted on the boat over the winter period. Now, if you are a regular here, you'll know I've already mentioned that I've had a brand new Axiom 9 display fitted up here in the chart table. And to go with that, brand new radar, an updated AIS transponder and all the NMNEA and Talk stuff that sits in the background quietly doing its stuff. So what I thought I'd do is I'd show you how I've set up the chart plotter and all that new kit here on the boat. Right here we are at the chart table. Now before we get into this let me just start by saying this isn't how I'm telling you you should be setting up your display and your equipment on your boat because you might do a different type of sailing to me, you may have a different type of boat to me and so of course everybody's going to set their equipment up differently. But what I am saying is that this so far is working well for me. Now I've only used the boat twice since all this new kit got installed so I am still learning and I am still making changes. Every time I've been out and when I've got back I've made a couple of changes. But this is what's working for me so far. Let me talk you through it and of course let me know if there's anything that I have missed out. If you have used this kit for a number of years and have got a lot more experience with it than I have then please put your comments in the box below and share with me what I should be doing on here that maybe I'm not at the moment. Right, so this is the new 9-inch display that was fitted over the winter period. And as you can see, it's got the external card reader. Now, this is an absolute godsend. If you're having one of these installed on your boat, get an external card reader. Because if you don't, every time you need to change the card, you have to take the screen out of the display because the built-in card reader on this display is at the back. Now, this is a Raymarine external card reader. And as you can just about see in there, it's got the Navionics SD card in there. And it's also got a USB plug there as well. So it means I can charge my phone here at the chart table. Now, why am I using Navionics charts on a Raymarine chart plotter? You might be asking yourself. Well, over the years, I've always used Navionics charts. I've got Navionics on two iPads and I've got it on my phone as well. So for me, it made sense to have Navionics on the chart plotter. Now, it's a bit cheeky, but if you've got a Navionics subscription for a mobile device, that subscription will not work in a chart plotter. You have to take out another subscription to get an SD card to use your Navionics on a chart plotter. I think that's really cheeky, but I kind of get why they're doing it. I can see why they're doing it. And for me, it makes life a little bit easier because I can pre-plan a route on Navionics on my iPad and then all I've got to do is then sync it with the Navionics chart on the chart plotter. It's a very simple process and it just means that I can plan routes and plan where I'm going the next day from the comfort of my bed or from chilling out in the saloon. I don't have to be sitting here at the chart table to do it. So let's get into the display and the first thing that I changed on the display was the way that the transducer reads the depth of the water. By default this will be showing you the total depth of the water from the bottom of the transducer to the seabed. Now, in a sailing boat, that's not the key bit of information you need. For me, what I need is how much depth is under my keel. And if you want the display to show you that, then you have to go into the settings and change it. And you do that by hitting settings in the bottom right hand corner, then going on to network, then you find the ITC5 controller, ITC5 converter. Then you hit calibrate, go to depth, and as you can see I've got it set to showing me the depth below the keel. And for it to do that accurately you have to put the, the distance between the transducer and the bottom of the keel. Okay, and uh, for me on this boat the keel below the water sits at 1.8 meters. So I know the transducer sits a little bit above that, so that gives me a little bit of leeway. So as default it comes with below the transducer so as you can see by putting it on there it's showing me that in the marina right now there's 1.8 1.9 meters of depth below the transducer okay I want it below the keel so you click on that then you tell the system how deep your keel is as I said mine's 1.8 meters so I'm going to put that to 1.8 there and now it's showing me there is zero depth underneath my keel now 
I'm, I'm taking that with a pinch of salt because we're in the marina. Uh, the marina water is absolutely filthy dirty and they've been doing a lot of dredging so it's very very murky. So there is more depth than what it's showing. But that is basically how you set the system up to display the depth of water below your keel. I don't really need to know how deep any given piece of water is that my boat is sitting in. What I do need to know is how much water is under the keel. Now if I didn't change it, what I would be doing every time I looked at the depth of the water, whatever that figure was, I'd be taking away 1.8 metres from that figure in order to give me the depth of water below the keel. And I just want to be able to look at the display and know exactly how far I've got before my keel hits the bottom. I don't need to be doing maths every time I look at the depth. Now going back to the display, as you can see there's three dots here so that gives you three pages. I'm not using the third page so I've got page one and I've got page two. Now on page one they are my full screens and on page two that's where I've got my split screens. So the things that I've got that I can display, I've got audio. I love the way that um, what you can do now with the fusion stereo that I've got on the boat I can control the music on the boat and that's quite a handy thing to do. I do play a lot of music on the boat when I'm not filming so to have the the audio there is quite handy. As you can see I've also got radar, I've got chart, I've got dashboard. So let's say I just want the radar on the screen. I just hit the radar and the radar comes on. Now it's a little bit cluttered in here at the moment as you can see with all those boats around. The white stuff is the land so it's a little bit cluttered and a little bit confused but that's because we're in a marina so let's come out of there. And this is an avionics chart that I was telling you about before. So as you can see, here we are in the marina. It's zoomed in quite close at the moment, but let's just zoom out. I've set it so that it gives the radar overlay and it's got the AIS overlay as well. So as you can see, all these green and, and red things are other boats in the marina. It's a little bit congested, but you kind of get the gist. OK, so that's the chart. This is dashboard and we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail in a while, but this is what you spend most of your time personalizing but as I said I'll come back to that in a while. So if I go to page two then as you can see on page two as I mentioned I've got my split screens so I can have a 50-50 split screen between chart and dashboard, chart and radar, radar and dashboard and I've got the three-way split screen. I don't use this very often because I think this is a bit cluttered. Okay this gives you your dashboard, it gives you your radar and it gives you your chart on one screen. I just think that's a little bit too busy and I find that just a little bit too too confusing. Um, so I tend to use radar and dashboard quite a lot. So there's the dashboard, there's the radar. Now one thing you'll see with any of my screens the depth is always in the top right hand corner. On every screen that is where you'll find the depth. So if we go back to the full screens, if I go to the chart, as you can see I've overlaid some information over the chart. And this is part of the personalization that I did. Um, on every screen the depth is always in the top right hand corner because for me that is the single most important thing, um, especially if I'm in somewhere where I've never been sailing before, if I'm in shallow water, I need to know what depth is under my keel and I know where to look for it and I know where to find it quickly. And so for me, it's always in the top right hand corner of every screen. And just to prove the point, if we go to the radar, again, you'll see depth is in the top right hand corner. And you can easily do this, okay? You can go and edit overlays by clicking on the button at the top, go down to the wheels, click on page settings, edit overlays, and then you can just hold the screen down. Now you're allowed four overlays on each screen. You can add data. This gives you this menu. So let's say I wanted something to do with speed. Let's put our average speed in there. Let's put the average speed there and I can just click on that now and I can move it to wherever I want on the screen. Let's just put it under there. There you go, that's nice. If that's too big, just click on edit, hold it down resize it, make it smaller to match the others. There you go, nice and small and that's needs moving now. So I can just move that there. And so there you go, that's put average speed on. Click done and the screen's there. Okay, so let's take you back to the chart and there's one or two different modes that you can use on the chart that I think are really helpful. Now by default it's set to navigate. 
but what you can do is you can change the mode of the map and you do that by hitting the equal sign there and then you click on mode and you've got various different modes you've got fishing you've got tides you've got anchor and you've got racing now i don't tend to use the tides or the fishing i don't do fishing um, but the racing mode is an interesting one because what that does it gives you various ley lines now as you can see here if i just zoom in you can see we are here you can see those two ley lines basically what they are if you don't know what ley lines are basically if you're heading towards a waypoint you may look like you're heading directly towards it but in fact the wind and the tide might be against you pushing you off either way uh, what these ley lines are doing it's reading the tide it's reading the wind and it's telling you how far off you need to steer in order to reach a certain waypoint so when we are sailing and navigating and heading in a certain direction I put it into into the uh, the racing mode and it gives you those ley lines the other mode I use quite a lot is the anchor mode so let's just zoom in here here we are so just start the anchoring wizard and then you just let out however much chain you've you need to let out so let's say we're going to let out 20 meters of chain there you mark the anchor position of where we are then you click on chain out click on activate and it says track started okay and as you can see there it's put a circle around the boat and basically what will happen is if the boat comes out of that circle it will set an alarm off so that's lovely peace of mind so you can relax have a night have a good sleep and know that if the boat does drag anchor uh, you will get notified by an alarm signal this little green uh, circle here is the wind direction and the 16 is the is the wind speed so it's running at about 14 15 knots at the moment and then when you wake up the next morning and you want to raise the anchor, you just cancel the anchor, delete that. You don't need to keep it. Are you sure? Yes. And that's it. The anchor wizard has turned itself off. And then you can just go back from anchor, go back to navigate. And away you go for your next day sail. Right, okay, let's go to dashboard. And as I said before, this, this screen is the screen that you can personalise the most. And if there's anything glaring that I'm missing from this screen that you think should be on display here then please put your comments in the box below but starting in the top right hand corner as always I've got depth I know I keep going on about this but depth is always in the top right hand corner what you don't want to be doing is for me putting depth in a different position because if it's in a different position on one screen to what it is on another you could accidentally misread depth as your speed or your speed is your depth and it just could cause a disaster so depth for me is always in the top right hand corner underneath that I've got our tracking in degrees true. I've got the roll, so how much the boat is rolling in bad weather. And then at the bottom there on the right hand side, I've got the sunrise and sunset times. And I've got that on the display because if I'm aiming to be somewhere before it gets dark, I need to know what time the sun is going down. Um, on the right hand side, I've got the speed over ground. I've got the true wind speed. I've got the vessel position in latitude and longitude there. And at the bottom is the log. So that is the log that I use when I make log entries in the ship's log. Um, that is uh, the log number that goes in. And then in the middle, I've got the wind dial, the true wind and apparent wind indicators are facing down because the wind is coming from the back of the boat at the moment. Um, we're not moving, so the true wind and apparent wind are together. And then right down at the bottom, this is the rudder angle. Now, just like on the chart screen, on this screen, you've got various options as well. And you can use these left and right arrows to toggle to different screens. And the next screen along is the navigation screen. I use this quite a lot. Obviously, if we set a waypoint, this rolling road, it acts very similar to those ley lines that I showed you before. It shows you how far off course we are. Um, and then these dashes represent data that you only get when you've set a waypoint. But um, again, it's just kind of everything is there that you need in order to head towards a waypoint. Don't use that screen an awful lot, but it's there to, to glance at every so often. The next screen along is just a completely uncluttered single data screen. And for me, I've set that up just to be the depth. So if I'm going in somewhere where I know the area, but I don't know the depth, that is just there. It's in your face. You can see exactly how much water is under your keel. And then finally, the other screen that I use, again, this is kind of a more of a minimalistic screen. It's just got some important data that I need to look at, maybe when I'm anchoring or coming in and out of a marina. Um, so depth in the top right hand corner, I've got wind speed, um, uh, wind direction, wind speed, and I've got the speed over ground. 
um, and I've got the rudder angle as well. Okay, going over to the split screens and the main split screens that I use, I've got chart and dashboard. So that is obviously the Navionics chart with the dashboard and again, depth in the top right hand corner. So these are all 50-50 split screens. This one here is the chart and radar. As you can see, the, the, the dashboard side, because it's a smaller screen area, hasn't got as much information on it. You do still have the various options that you can scroll through. So it is still quite handy to have, but um, you don't get as much information. But one thing I do use quite a lot is what I call the chart combo. Now this is two copies of the Navionics chart on one screen. On the left hand side, we're zoomed right in. On the right hand side, we're zoomed out. And the reason why I do that is because, as you know, the biggest downfall with electronic charts when you compare them to paper charts is that it's very easy to miss something. A paper chart, it's, it's big, it's all there in front of you. Now, a lot of information on the electronic charts, you only see when you zoom right in. Um, and I know people have come a cropper because they've had the chart zoomed out too far and they've missed an obstacle and they've hit it. Um, if they'd have zoomed in on the, on the chart, they'd have seen it. Um, so what I do with this is I have one side of the map zoomed right in and the other map on the other side zoomed right out. And again, that just gives me that little bit of protection and a little bit more security knowing that I can see what's quite close around the boat, but I can also see a bigger picture of where we are and what's around us when we're offshore. Right, so there's just one more thing to show you on this and I love this, okay? If you've got an iPad or a mobile device, you can control everything on this screen through your device. And the way you do that is just through the Raymarine Control app. It needs to, you need to get your device on the same Wi-Fi as the, as the chart plotter. And as you can see here, I can control the chart plotter with my iPad. There's a little bit of a delay sometimes, but there you go. So I can look at all these different bits of information. I can set an anchor. I can look at the anchor alarm. There's nothing I can't do on this iPad that you can do on that screen. So let's just go over to the single screen. Let's just bring up the dashboard. So I'm controlling this on the iPad and it's going to come up on there and I can look at all the information. So it means that I can actually run this system when I'm in bed. Just have the iPad by the side of your bed and uh, you can keep an eye on things, you can change things. And I think that is an absolute superb way of doing things. Right, so I hope you've enjoyed that very brief overview on how I've set up my new Raymarine chart plotter and the Raymarine equipment that I've had installed on the boat over the last couple of months. Remember, as I said before, if there's anything I've missed that you think should be on one of my displays, please put your comments in the box below. If you've enjoyed this episode, give me that thumb, hit that like, share the love, and if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. That does it for Dave for today. Thanks a lot for your company. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.